And Zach Eady, who had a wonderful season, this is not about limiting touches in the post. This is a psychological thing that Purdue hasn't been able to clear lately. Yeah, there are two components to this. One is giving credit where credit is due, and Fairleigh Dickinson deserves an enormous amount of credit. They had an opportunity, they took advantage of it, and they closed it. So at the end of the game, they closed it, and they made, made really big plays. But then you also have to place blame where you have to put blame, and that's on Purdue. I mean, Purdue shot 36% against a team that's ranked 350th in adjusted defense. And this, this is a team that in the metrics is ranked 275th in the country. And there's never been that big of a spread where an upset's been pulled off in the history of this tournament. This is the biggest upset in, in the history of the tournament. Purdue coughed it up 16 times. That was a plus seven turnover advantage for Fairleigh Dickinson in this game. And Purdue, 36%. And Fairleigh Dickinson did an amazing job, I thought, of using their size in a positive way. They're really small. They're the smallest team in Division I. So they played Zach Eady low. They used leverage on him. Anytime he brought the ball down, they were there to bother him. And, but they, they made choices. There were some wide open shots that Purdue had. They either missed them or didn't take them. And that, that was an issue, like you're saying, that was a psychological thing. That, that was a team that was afraid to lose, and that, I think, helped them lose. Uh, this one's going to be hard to, hard to sit with. I agree with, with Matt Painter. But three years in a row of losing to North Texas a 13, then St. Peter's a 15, and now Fairleigh Dickinson a 16, that's now a trend, and that's a trend that, that Purdue's got to get out of. I'm going to go on the other side of it. Shocking. Harvard on the hack and sack. But this wasn't a gimmick. Like, I think the thing I was most impressed with with Fairleigh Dickinson was that they didn't reinvent themselves to play against Purdue. They are who they are. Be the hardest playing, toughest team. Get up and underneath people. Pressure people. Disrupt the tempo and rhythm of the game. All the things I used to talk about, about the art of the upset. Instead of letting Purdue play their game, they forced Purdue to play their game. And to me, that's the essence of coaching. And they were the harder playing, toughest team. Just think about this. They were plus 10 in terror and points off turnovers, plus five in second chance points, plus one in fast break points, all hustle uh, stats. To me, what Fairleigh Dickinson did was they, this wasn't a, a, a gimmick. They won for five minutes. They won for 10 minutes. They won for 20 minutes. They won this game for 40 minutes by competing and imposing their identity on the game, not backing down. And I understand Purdue did not play well, but there was a reason they didn't play well. It was fairly Dickinson how hard they played and their ability to control the tempo of the game with how physical those, as undersized they were, as how physical they played and how they got them to react to them. But you're not saying that, I agree with all that, but you're not saying that Fairleigh Dickens is the better team. No, but for one night they were. Agree, but they were the better team because Purdue sucked. Yeah. <laughs> they sucked. Yeah. And, and that, you got to place the blame where it needs to go, and it needs to go on Purdue. I, and I totally agree with that, but you also have to give, like you said, well, he did. Said, the credit. I did. Let, 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 me, let, me, let, me get, let me get Fonz in here. Fonz, I don't know that there's any <clears throat> event in sports, maybe the Masters in golf. I was trying to think last mm -hmm. night. An event yeah. that can crush competitors mm -hmm. with the pressure and the expectations and the fear of losing the way the yes, NCAA yes. tournament can and really the way it did Purdue mm -hmm. last night. Uh, there's no question about it. I thought Seth made a great point. I, I thought uh, Fairleigh Dickinson did a great job of making Purdue uncomfortable, whether it be pressing for 94 feet in the half court. They were dropping one guy in the lap of Zach Eady, uh, making his – touches uh, a bit uncomfortable he was a, that was the first time I've seen him all year be a bit uncomfortable and you guys know I've said all year long my main concern as Purdue got to the NCAA tournament was how would their rookie their freshman backcourt respond and and I, I, I love both of them and they play really well but you're talking about a team that really turned that basketball over Jay alluded to it the pressure got to them they turned it over 16 times in that game Brayton Smith had seven of those turnovers and so that was that was a look that they hadn't seen a lot of and I thought they crumbled under that pressure so was it psychological the fact that they had lost a double digit season in the past absolutely but Fairleigh Dickinson did a great job remember the tallest guy on Fairleigh Dickinson's team is 6'6 six, six. they imposed their will and their style on Purdue and Purdue just crumbled okay I, we've got a lot more stuff to get to but there's one thing that jumps out I've said it uh, you know we've talked about addressing the trend 
What is it that you do? Now, if you're, if you're Purdue, how do you, how do you do something concrete and tangible to deal with what is clearly an issue in your program now? Well, I think it's, it comes down to your mentality. You know, you go into a fight, you don't stand there and, and try to avoid punches. You punch, and Purdue did not throw one punch in that game, not one. And th that has to be profoundly disappointing to, I mean, I know Boilermaker fans, but to the players themselves. And, you know, look, Fairleigh Dickinson lost 15 games this year. They beat one team ranked in the top 300 in the Ken Palm rankings. That was St. Joseph's. I'm, I'm not, they played great. They did everything they're supposed yes. to do. All credit to, to mm -hmm. Fairleigh Dickinson. Mm -hmm. But you have to look at the other side of this and yeah, say, did sure. Purdue do anything they were supposed to do? And the answer is no. There was no adjustments made. Nothing was done to yeah. change that. And that, that's a mindset thing. You know, you don't go into that game saying, well, we felt disrespected by what Tobin Anderson said in the, in the post game in the locker room after they won their, their first four game and then go out there and, and, like, be the reacting team instead of the dictating team. Purdue dictated nothing in that game. And that, that, needs, to be, that needs to be said. They're the better team, and they didn't go out and impose anything. Be the aggressor and have agility to change. It's plain and simple. Be the aggressor. Impose your identity on the game. Be ready to play and make that first punch. But more importantly, if things aren't going right, the one thing Purdue is they're so committed to how they play, but you've also, the, the essence, another essence of coaching is you've got to have agility within the game to say, do we go small, do we mm -hmm. go big, do we add another perimeter guy that can guard on the perimeter, another ball handler that can drive it and make a play. I didn't think they made any adjustments when they couldn't get the tempo the way they wanted to. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.